there, morbid maniacs. It's time for another spooky video for the vlog October. And for tonight's spooky video, I'm gonna be talking all about the Monte Cristo homestead. Now, before I get into this video, I just wanted to say that if you're new here, hello, my name is Melanie. And over here, we are Halloween 24 seven, okay? It's paranormal content all throughout the year, but especially for the month of October, we do 31 days straight of nothing but paranormal and spooky content. So if that is something that you're interested in, please feel free to stick around, subscribe, and become a part of this little Morbid Maniac family. Located in Juni, New South Wales, Australia, lies the Monte Cristo homestead. At first sight, the residence appears as a home filled with success, good fortune, and a happy family. But looks can be very deceiving. The property has a very haunting past, and there are events which occurred there which cannot be seen by the light of day. It is considered to be one of Australia's most haunted houses. It all began with a man by the name of Christopher William Crawley, who would purchase two parcels of land to build a home for his family. Christopher was also a farmer. The first few years of living there, it was a struggle for the Crawley family. At the time, they were living inside of a slab hut. Christopher would struggle to keep food on the table and to provide for his family. However, soon his luck would change in 1878 when the Great Southern Railway Line would open. Christopher would scrap all the money together he could find in order to build the railway hotel, which would be on the opposite side of the soon-to-be railway station. This was a very smart decision on his part. The town of Juni only consisted of Crawley's Hotel and the adjoining railway store and other scattered slab huts. The entire town would benefit from Christopher's decision and soon he would grow to be very rich. He would even become one of the town's founders. He was loved deeply by the village of Juni and he was considered to be a very generous man who took on a big responsibility. It said that prior to the construction of the hotel in 1885, the Crowley family, father, mother, and all seven children lived in a small little cottage. The original slab hut that they were originally living in was turned into a stable for prized horses. And the small brick cottage, which was a part of the original homestead, is said to still exist. That house was turned into the servants' quarters. The new home which they lived in was a two-story home and was built in a late Victorian style. It overlooked the town of Juni. Christopher Crawley would pass away in his own home on December 14, 1910, due to a combination of heart failure and blood poisoning. The blood poisoning was caused due to an infected carbuncle on his neck. His wife, Elizabeth Crawley, was said to have taken the loss of her husband very hard and she would lock herself away inside the attic where she would build a small chapel and during the rest of the remainder of her life, she would only leave the house twice. She would eventually pass away at the age of 42 on August 12, 1933 due to an appendix rupture. The last member of the Crawley family would leave the home in 1948 and after the home would remain empty for more than a decade. He would have several caretakers during that time. Unfortunately, many would come to vandalize the property and many of the home's original items were stolen and sold. Soon it would reach the hands of the Ryan family, Reginald and Olive Ryan. The Ryans would restore the homestead back to its original state and would turn it into a museum for tours 
a doll museum, and even an antique shop. Reginald would pass away in 2014, but Olive continues to take care of the homestead. Upon first arriving at the home, the couple immediately knew something was off and something strange was going on with the home. As they went inside the home, their cat and doll refused to go inside and would actually run away from it. Later, as they were having an evening out, once they returned home, they noticed that all the lights appeared to be on inside of the homestead. However, whenever they approached the home and opened the front door, none of the lights were on. The homestead is believed to be haunted by at least 10 spirits. And this part I don't like so much because I just don't understand how you could hate these sweet little precious innocent babies that were clearly put here to make us happy. There is said to be the spirit of an animal hater inside of a homestead. It is believed to be one of the former owners. The Ryans would return home one night to find all of their chickens strangled to death. Their parrot would choke to death inside of its cage. And this part makes me really sad because as you guys know, I am a cat lover. I have cats of my own. I've always had cats. So this part makes me really sad, but a litter of kittens, which they had been raising inside of their breakfast room, were also found brutally murdered. Christopher Corrali is believed to haunt the room where he passed. His spirit is said to be very kind and friendly. His wife is also said to haunt the home. However, it's believed that she is not as kind. She is said to judge everyone and anyone who enters her home. And if she doesn't like you, or if you do not show any manners towards her, she will place an ice cold hand upon your neck. Christopher Corrali was believed to be sexually active with a few of the workers in the homestead. He apparently would get two of the maids pregnant. One of these maids would unalive herself by jumping from the balcony. She was pregnant at the time she jumped. Her ghost is said to still haunt the veranda and there is a bloodstained mark where she landed. The second maid would give birth to a son. She would name the little boy Harold. When Harold was a young boy, he was said to have been in a terrible accident on the premises. Harold would be hit by a coach. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they meant by hit, hit, but I'm assuming it meant he was hit like in the head or something, or he was hit by a car. I'm leaning more towards the car. He would survive the incident, however, with much head trauma, he would be disabled for the rest of his life. It's said that he would be kept on chains inside of the coach's room. Local children would pick on him and bully him daily as he would scream. They would taunt him, calling him a monster, and would actually challenge each other to find him and torture him. Eventually, Harold will be placed inside of a mental asylum after being found by the authorities, chained to his mother's bed. The maid would pass away and her son would eventually pass away inside of the asylum. However, his spirit is said to still haunt the Monte Cristo homestead. You will often hear the sound of Harold rattling his chains. The coach house is also said to be haunted by the ghost of another young boy by the name of Morris. Now Morris wasn't feeling too well one day and he decided to sleep in and stay in bed. His master did not approve of him sleeping in and wanted to teach him a lesson. The man would set the boy's straw mattress ablaze. He believed that this would make the young boy jump up and get to work. However, Morris was too ill and could not make it out of the bed. And therefore, he would pass lying in the coach's house. People are said to still hear his screams to this day. Crawley's infant granddaughter by the name of Ethel was believed to have passed away in the homestead as well in 1917. The cause of death was determined to be due to a nursemaid dropping her from a flight of stairs. The maid claimed that an unseen force had pushed her. However, no one would believe her. 
It's said that children who visit the homestead today will often report feeling very irritable and upset. Some guests claim that they will feel as if they're being pushed on their backs. Some have even stated that it felt as though a tiny hand slipped into their own as they walk up the stairs. And a more recent haunting of the homestead is that of Jack Simpson. Jack was one of the home's caretakers and at some point he was shot to death in 1960. He would be shot in front of the house by another young man. The man who unalived him had apparently been watching the movie Psycho over and over again about three times before he committed this crime. He would scratch into the shed door, die Jack, ha ha, which is still there today. Visitors of the Monte Cristo homestead may also report lights which flicker on and off. Feelings of illness and nausea, overwhelming feelings of sadness, disembodied whispers and unexplainable mists within the home, orbs, as well as items moving around all on their own. Some people are even known to faint during tours. The home has been featured on many paranormal television shows such as Scream Test, Ghost Hunters, and My Ghost Story. So there was the story of the Monte Cristo homestead. What do you guys think of this creepy place? Would you ever visit there for yourself? I know I sure would. This place was loaded. Like whenever I was doing research, this place was one of the ones that was loaded. Like the research for it just kept going on and on because there was just so much on it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big old thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you have not already and become a morbid maniac also be sure to hit that bell notification that way you get notified every single time i upload a new video and i love you guys so so much and i will see you in tomorrow's video